So in this video, I am showing sampling of 2D case space for an example of magnetic resonance imaging, MRI. Bottom left corner, we've got a sagittal MRI image. Just next to it, I've got the 2D Fourier transform of that image. And you can see that I've got this growing red circle in the 2D Fourier transform of that image. And that red circle is showing us the current parts of case space that I am including in the 2D inverse Fourier transform shown in the top left corner of the display. You'll also notice there is a orbiting little dot going around that red circle, and that is showing us the current KX, KY coordinates that we are looking at in the 2D case space. So as that KX, KY uh, coordinate uh, changes as we move around that circle, that corresponds, of course, to a different spatial frequency kx and a different spatial frequency ky. kx corresponds to the number of cosines or sines that fit from left to right in the horizontal field of view. ky corresponds to the number of cosines or sine signs that fit from top to bottom in the y direction, the vertical direction of that field of view. So as we orbit around that circle, we can see we're considering different kx and different ky values, which result in different looking cosine and sine 2D basis functions shown in the top right of the display. So you'll notice as that dot goes around, um, when it reaches the rightmost side of the circle, that corresponds to the current maximum kx value. So that's the cu current largest spatial frequency in the x direction. And then as it orbits around to the left side of the circle, that corresponds to the most negative spatial frequency minus kx currently being included in the Fourier synthesis in the inverse Fourier transform. And we can see a profile through the cosine basis function just to the right of the case space. I'm showing a simple profile through that cosine basis function. So you can see easily that as kx changes according to the position of that dot, as we orbit around that red circle in case space, as kx changes, so we can see the increasing and decreasing number of cosines that fit from left to right in the image. Um, I am also showing in the bottom right corner a red profile. That is a red profile through the center of that true image um, that was shown in the left corner there. And then I'm also showing a black profile which is the current profile through the top left inverse Fourier transform, which of course is the inverse Fourier transform of the current red regions that I've considered in the 2D case space. So a few observations are that of course, as um, the orbit of that dot increases, as we consider more and more regions in case space, so therefore the spatial resolution of the image the inverse Fourier transform is improving because we're considering larger and larger kx and ky values. That corresponds to greater and greater spatial resolution and detail appearing in the image. And also, just above the 2D case space, I am showing the inverse Fourier transform of just the current circumference that I am visiting in the 2D case space. So as that red circle is increasing, so the orbit of that dot, the dot being the current location I'm visiting in case space, um, that circumference increases um, with time, and that corresponds um, to showing greater and greater spatial resolution features in the image. And I'm just inverse Fourier transforming the current circumference of that I'm visiting with that dot. And so you can see, therefore, just above the 2D uh, Fourier transform, we've got this um, developing higher and higher spatial resolution components that are being added and included into effectively the inverse Fourier transform that we're showing in the top left corner. So that dot in case space that we're seeing going around in that circle is showing us the kx, ky spatial frequency coordinates, which corresponds to a particular pair of spatial basis functions, the cosine and the sine, where they have frequencies in both the x direction and the y direction corresponding to the number of waveforms fitting from left to right in the x direction and from top to bottom in the y direction. I'm then simply adding together 
those cosine and sine basis functions based on the complex value of the 2D Fourier transform, the complex value f. I'm considering the real part and the imaginary part of that complex number, and that gives me the coefficients for the cosine and the sine. Those coefficients are real values extracted from the real and imaginary part of the complex number. I'm then simply adding together those cosine and sine basis functions, and then I can create the top left Fourier synthesis that you are seeing. So I hope you found this video useful for visualizing sampling of 2D case space for MRI, but of course it's useful for just understanding 2D case space in general, whether you're working in MRI or in another imaging area. Thank you very much for watching.